Hey guys, I'm the Burke and I do things and I am very excited to film this video. It might be the second time I'm filming it because I lost all the footage of the first version, but this is my quarterly makeup inventory video. So in this video, I go through every single category of makeup and tell you how much each category increased or decreased in the last quarter. And then I also let a number generator choose a full face of makeup for me. Now, I really contemplated redoing the number generator, but I had such a cool look I feel like made out of the last time I filmed this video that I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stick with what's on this list of what was rolled the last time I filmed this so you guys can see me using these products and how I chose to pair them together. And also I can let you know how the makeup actually lasted since I've done this freaking video already before. There is a change that I was making this quarter that I can tell you guys about. Basically, I kind of realized that when I'm doing like my like bronzer or blush or highlight, like I like using cream and powder right now. So I actually rolled so that I got both a cream and a powder in each of those categories. And for eyeliner, I use both pencil and liquid. So again, I rolled so that I got one of each. And I don't know, I thought this was a really fun video. I <laughs> promise to make this just as exciting as I felt like it was the first time around. So if you guys like learning about makeup inventory and like seeing kind of like a roulette style makeup look, then keep on watching. Let's go. I will say I did have a mini breakdown when I realized I lost all the footage because it was a, it was like, a, like it was, it was sad to me because like Scott had taken Phoebe and like watched her so I could get that work done and I feel like I wasted time and you know, it, it was upsetting. I drank some, some White Claw, had some chocolate. I considered bringing a White Claw for this video but I thought, you know what? Coffee's probably a better idea right now. So let's get into this. So in my spreadsheet, I have bronzers, blush, highlight, and face palettes. So what I did was I went through all of those and then I let a number generator choose between individual products or face palette. And then based on that is how we decide how I was able to choose the different products. So let me tell you the inventory information first. So for bronzers in the first quarter, I used one up in February, bringing my total to 40. For individual blushes, I got one new one in January, bringing my total to 70 blushes. In the first quarter for highlighters, I had no change, meaning I still have 39. And for face palettes, I also had no change in the first quarter, meaning my total is still 46 face palettes. Now, when I did the randomization, it did land on face palettes. So I did let the number generator choose a face palette and it landed on number 16, which was a all blush palette. Then for the rest of the face products, I did let the number generator choose. So for bronzers, we landed on number four, which is a cream bronzer and number 14, which is a powder bronzer. Then I did go back into blushes for a cream blush. So we landed on number 56. For highlights, I landed on number 30, which is a powder highlighter and number six, which is a cream highlighter. So I have one of each of in those categories. And I'm very excited to show you guys what was picked because some of the stuff I have not used in so long, except I just used it the last time I filmed. So for eyeshadows, I do have this broken up into every single palette I own and then every individual shadow I own. So the individual shadows include both single shadows and each individual pan in each palette. So for eyeshadow palettes, I did get one new one in March, bringing my total to 63. And for individual shadows, I increased by three in February and 10 in March, bringing my total pans to 804 shadows. Now I let a number generator choose between one, just any random palette, or two, five individual random shadows from my entire collection. It did land on one. So I did randomly generate a palette and it landed on number 38, which is the biggest palette in my collection. Also a palette I've never used because I've been intimidated by how large it is. So you will find out later in this video what palette it is. Then the next category in my makeup is foundations and I did increase by one in February, bringing my total to 68 foundations. I do like to disclose though that my inventory does not differentiate between full size products and mini sample size products. So some numbers may seem higher than they actually are just because I just categorize every individual thing as one item. For eye primers and lash glue, I just have everything together. I didn't have a change in the last quarter. I still have 11 items between those two categories. For concealers, I did use one up in February, so I do have 31 in, oh, I'm realizing I didn't tell you guys which foundation. For foundation, I landed on number 18, which I hadn't used in so long, but it's one of my favorites, sorry. I didn't choose an eye primer because I barely use eye primer and 
I'd rather just <laughs> use my concealer to prime. So like I said, I do have 31 concealers and I landed on number 25, which again is one I really like and I haven't used in so long. That's why I love doing these videos. It kind of gives me like a makeup refresh, I feel like. For setting sprays, I did not make any change this quarter, which is very frustrating because I've been trying so hard to pay on one and it's just taking forever. They have 32 in that category and I landed on number six, which is one I want to pan in the year 2022, so hopefully I can. For brow products, I used one up in January and got a new one in March, so I have 52 total. And I did randomize and I landed on first up number 48, which is a brow gel, which is a very interesting one. And then I landed on number 26, which is a brow pencil, so I will be using those two products together today. For eyeliners, I had no change in the last quarter, so I still have 51 in my collection. And the number generator landed on number five, which is a liquid. And then it landed on number 27, which is like a retractable pencil. So I'll be using those two eyeliners in today's makeup look. For powder, I had no change last quarter, so I still do have 32 in my collection. And I landed on number 24, which is again, is actually something I'm trying to finish up in the year 2022. For primers, I finished one up in February and one month one up in March, bringing my total to 39 primers. And I landed on number 12, which is, it's a strange one. Now for lip products, I will go through all four categories, lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, lip glosses and lip liners, and then I let the number generator choose between one and four. So for lipsticks, I did get one new one in February, bringing my total to 77. Liquid lipsticks, I used one up in February, super exciting, bringing my total to 84. Lip glosses, I had no change so far this year, keeping my total at 90. And lip liners, I had no change, keeping my total at 30. So I did choose between one and four. It landed on number three. So it did randomly choose a lip gloss and it chose number 11, which could not tell you the last time I reached for this lip gloss prior to filming. <laughs> okay, then for mascara, I did use up three in January, got a new one in February, bring my total to 27. So I actually landed on number 27, which is more of like a top coat product so I actually rolled for a second option and I landed on number 19 which is a brand new mascara that I have never tried before so now I've obviously tried it but I can actually give you some like first impression thoughts now that I've actually worn it a few times over the past week or so so this is kind of a weirder way of doing it I don't know if this like ruined the concept I just I knew I still had everything written down on this piece of paper and I guess if it had been a makeup look that like absolutely made me miserable, I wouldn't be doing it again. But I was like so into the way this makeup turned out and it is not a makeup look I ever would have like thought to pair together. So it was just so fun and I didn't want to like lose this look because I lost the footage. So I hope you guys still like this. I <laughs> promise next quarter we will have the authenticity of the randomization. I'm gonna go re-grab all this makeup and we're gonna do a full face of Makeup randomly chosen by Google, essentially. Okay, so let's get into this, starting with our primer. So I did say I landed on number 12, which is this little sample size uh, from Tarte. This came in like a little Tarte set that I bought a while ago. This is called their Shape Tape Pore and Prime Balm. It's strange. It's literally like this weird balm. It just feels like a very generic silicone primer, but to make it like fancier, they like smushed it in this little balm. So I don't really use it all over my face. I just kind of focus it more so in the center. I don't know. I kind of prefer something that's going to give a little life underneath my foundation. That's just kind of what I prefer. I really can't tell you the last time I reached for this thing because I don't really even understand it. So for concealer, I landed on number 25, which was from Haley's Beauty. This is called their Revive concealer. I have this in the shade Fair Light Neutral. I really like this one. It's a very creamy concealer. Now, I will say it's a little light for the foundation we're using today, but if I've been able to make it work <laughs> last time I filmed this, I can do it again. It's a very, very lightweight concealer. I actually have tried a few things from Haley's Beauty and I've really liked them. It is something where I wish like they were sell sold through another retailer, but so I've only really purchased from them once, but I do like all the products I have from them. So now I'm going to blend in the concealer with this beauty blender. And I do think it has decent coverage. I wouldn't call it full coverage though, so I don't think. I would say medium. And I honestly might go in with a second layer and just let it sit for a second before we go in with our foundation because I will say I need all the coverage I can get under my eyes these days. So how is everyone doing? 
I feel like March was three months long. Did anyone feel like March lasted forever? I can't believe we're finally in April. I was counting down for April because I was so excited to film this video to the point where I like pre-filmed it. It was still technically March when I filmed it, but I was so excited to film it. And then when I lost it, I was just crushed. But yeah, I'm definitely ready for some springtime over here. I don't know about you guys. For foundation, I land on number 18. It's the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation. I have this in the shade medium. This is a great, great product. I will be using it with my sponge though because the coverage is a little, it's a thicker consistency. So I prefer something that's going to maybe absorb a little bit of the product. So it's not necessarily super cakey on my skin, but I do think it's a really, really pretty looking finish. Did I say this is in the shade medium? So I'm gonna go over the concealed area just a tiny bit just to kind of mesh the shades together. I'm a big fan of the finish on this product and I haven't used it in so long. So I'm really glad that I kind of rolled it into this project to remind me of my fondness for it. And I feel like even, you can see like, even without having a glowy primer underneath, like it definitely has a glow to it, which is nice. All right, now we're going to go in with our cream products that I mentioned. So first for our cream bronzer, I did roll in the ABH contour stick in the shade Mink. I'm really not a fan of this. I mean like, this is all that's left in it. I should just finish it, but like, it is very gray. It is very, very gray. So it's a little bit intimidating for me. So, so <laughs> I'm going to blend it in a little bit with this Real Techniques brush, and then I'm going to go back in with the sponge just to even blend it even more because it's more of a stiff product I find, and I don't find it blends as like naturally as other cream products I have. I'm definitely not the biggest fan of it, but there's just so little left. It's definitely not a product I would ever see myself buying. Now for blush, I am so excited to use this, you guys. I used it, actually like, I reused it again for the first time, like right before I filmed this video. So when I rolled it in, I was super excited. It's from Kaja and it's one of their bento blushes. This is Juicy Watermelon, which comes with this more like neutral shade and this like bright red shade. We're going in with the bright red shade today and it's gonna look so good at the end. I promise you. So I'm just gonna bounce some on here with my sponge. I'm just gonna bounce a little on my forehead. I don't want it to come. I usually try to like not come in too far, but we'll have plenty of time to touch up spots throughout this video. And then finally I will go in with the cream highlight I landed on. And this is called, this is from Steve Laurent. This is their jelly highlighter in Cotton Candy. I think I got this in PR from BoxyCharm. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was BoxyCharm and not Ipsy though. So I'm going to go in with the sponge. You, It's literally like jelly. So it's just like this putty that moves around. So I'm just gonna tap it on. It really is very pretty. When it comes to blinding highlights, I really prefer it in cream form over powder at this point because of the way it just melts in and looks a little bit more natural in my opinion. Okay, now we will be setting everything with the powder. And remember I said it was a powder that I've been wanting to pan this year. It's from Physicians Formula, it's their healthy powder. And this is kind of what my pan is currently look, looking like. I actually have a second one of these that I bought as a backup when I heard the healthy line was being discontinued. I never was the biggest fan of the healthy foundation, but I have always loved the healthy powder. I would still say I really enjoy it. I don't think it's one of those products that I've like, quote unquote, outgrown. Like, I still really do like it. And right now I'm just gonna use it to set around my eyes. And now we can do the brows. So the brow pencil I landed on is actually the first brow pencil I ever fell in love with. This was before I found out about like really skinny, like micro brow pencils. It's the It Cosmetics Brow Power. I fully used one of these up when I first discovered it. So it's a universal brow pencil that kind of works based on how firmly you press. So especially now that I have no blonde in my hair, I definitely have been trying to aim for a darker brow. So I definitely have to press pretty hard to, to get my desired shade with this brow pencil now. And uh, for that reason, I would say it's not really a favorite. It's a little bit of work compared to just a regular brow pencil. But back when I first discovered this, I had never used anything like, you know, a brow whiz or precisely my brow, nothing like that. Everything I had used up until then was like literally like a wooden pencil. So this like retractable magic was like magic to me. I also feel like it's hard to like shape your brows. 
when you're focusing on pressing hard and the little like, it's like an oval. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but it's not tiny. I don't know. Also, I have a pet peeve because the caps look the same, but one of them doesn't fit on. See like how it fits here? Half the time I put this one on and it falls off. So it's kind of frustrating. For brow gel though, I landed on the ABH Clear Brow Gel. Now I bought this at the end of 2020 in the last Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. And I wanted to finish my Benefit 24 hour brow setter before opening this. I've been trying to pan the, the 24 hour brow setter for over a year. So when I landed on this for this video, I was like, well, the fates have told me to open it up finally. The ABH brow gel really has been a favorite of mine for a very long time. So I'm excited to have it back again. I think I've gone through a full size and two minis. So this will be like the fourth one I've had. Now I'm gonna bronze really quick. I did land on the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I've never fully panned a powder bronzer, but this is the oldest bronzer in my collection. Do I dare try? I don't know, maybe like in the summertime when I'm one in the tropical smells and vibes, I could try to pan it fully. I don't know, I've never done it before. Okay, now I think we're gonna get into eyeshadow. What I landed on is called the BH Cosmetics Ultimate Matte 24 Color Shadow Palette. I bought this definitely pre-pandemic at TJ Maxx and never was like, I was always too scared to open it and use it. I'm pretty sure in the, la in the last video, I focused on this shade and this shade kind of as my inspiration. So I'm doing a pink eyeshadow look by choice, which is interesting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a pencil, grab a fluffy brush here. This is actually a BH Cosmetic pencil. I'm gonna start with that darker one and start getting it all over my lid. I think I went with pink because I was just like so excited for spring and I was like, let's do it. Let's do a springy look. And I did not regret it at all. And obviously if you are watching this channel, you know that I never do colorful eyeshadow. So it was quite a big deal. Now I'm gonna grab something flatter like this <laughs> from the same beach because on it's marble set, it's like a little bit flatter. And I'm gonna use that same color and just start packing it on my lid. Also something is that this is an all matte palette. So, I mean, I couldn't tell you the last time I had done a all matte look. I feel like I'm someone naturally who relies on a shimmer to kind of spice up my look because my matte eyeshadow blending abilities are limited, I guess you could say. But I'm basically just building this one color up. And then what I did last time was I took something a little fluffier. So let's do this one. This is from Shayna B. It's a little bigger and I'm gonna go in with that more like peachy shade I've pointed out and I'm going to start blending it along the crease just to diffuse the edges. Don't you love it? 42 shades and I'm using two colors, but I feel like I get an exemption for doing pink. So and I'm gonna go back in with the packer brush and just pack a little bit more. And then again with the peach once more. Then I'm tempted to go in something. I don't, I don't think I did this last time. This is actually another BH Cosmetics from their Pro line. And this one doesn't have anything on it. I'm just gonna blend the edges to make them crisp. Well, is it crisp or just diffused? Diffused. And now I'm gonna go in with the two liners that I drew. So for the retractable liner, I landed on this one from Wet n Wild. This is called their Mega Last Retractable Liner and this is the shade Blackest Black. This one is actually pretty creamy. I don't mind it. I don't even remember where I got this. I think I maybe got it one year when I was doing some sort of Halloween makeup. I can't really remember. Now this next product, this liquid liner, I actually am going to declutter it after using it in this video here because it just, it worked in the last video. However, I just wanna like do a little bit more here. However, I will say that the dry down of it kind of dried to a very diluted gray, I almost wanna say. It did not look black. I'm not sure if it's, it must be because it's so old. It's from Mirabella and it's called their Magic Marker Eyeliner. It's like a very, very large felt tip. Couldn't even tell you where I got it from. But it's not easy to work with. It wasn't even looking black. I mean, it lasted. I will say the liner lasted all day when I wore it last. But at that point, like, so does my physician's formula. So I don't really need it. This is very hard to use. I need to get really close to my mirror. I definitely went too far in. I hate going too far in, that's really upsetting. You guys, Phoebe's done it. She has, we don't talk about Bruno stuck in my head. Eyeshadow's looking scary, camera's overheating. I'll be right back. I am not feeling this liner. I am just, 
it's not looking good and I'm not enjoying it. So I'm just gonna go to my powder blush. If you remember, I said I landed on a blush palette and I was very excited because I had recently watched someone's video and they were using this palette and I was like, when was the last time I reached for that? It's from Alamar Cosmetics. This is their Colorette Blush Trio. I have this in the Fair Light and I'm going to be mixing these two shades. We're gonna get real glowy because this is a very glowy blush palette along with a gl very glowy uh, powder highlighter, which I actually landed on a highlighter that was kind of featured in a recent video I posted. Now I definitely went too hardcore with the powder blush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back in with my Physician's Formula Powder and kind of diffuse the edges a bit because I don't want it being too harsh. So if you saw the vid one of my most recent chatty get ready with me, so I was using products that were favorites from Marches of like the past. And one of them was the Milani Cosmetics Afterglow Highlighter. So I'm gonna go in very gently with this one because it is very glowy. And then I'll probably tap my blush brush over it just a bit. And then I'm gonna go in with my setting spray. Like I said, this was one I wanted to, that I do want to finish up this year. It's from Elf and it's their Hydrating Coconut Mist. There's really not much left in this bottle. I wouldn't so much call this like a setting spray or anything, but it definitely does like hydrate. I feel like my face looks very hydrated, but not like it's going to like melt off. It does smell delicious though. It is a very, very good smelling spray. Now let's talk about mascara. I had mentioned that I landed on like a top coat, which is the Huda Beauty Waterproof Mascara, which is fantastic because the brand new mascara I landed on is from Lily Lashes. It's their Triple X Mascara. This looks really good on the lashes, but it smudges way too much. So I need the Huda Beauty top coat. So this combination is actually pretty good. My only thing is the Lily Lashes is one of these really big fluffy brushes. And I just feel like I make such a mess with these kind of brushes. I get mascara all over my lids. I feel like I get myself poked in the eye a lot. So I definitely have to be careful with this wand. I have to not just like speed through it or else I'm in trouble. Because I mean, just with like two coats and no coats, I feel like this one looks great. But like I said, it's going to smudge if I don't put this top coat on. So I've been using the absolute crap out of this Huda Beauty top coat because right now so many of my open mascaras are just like smudgerific. <laughs> okay, so eyes are done. Like I said, I did land on a lip gloss and I can't remember if I got this in an Ipsy or a BoxyCharm. I wanna lean towards BoxyCharm, but I can't remember. It's from the brand La Ritzy. This is their lip gloss in the shade Vibe. I didn't know how this was going to go, but actually I enjoyed it. So it's kind of just like a pigmented nude gloss. It smells so good. It has like a very faint chocolatey scent. It's pretty thick, so it actually feels pretty nourishing. And what I wound up doing the last time I did this look was I actually topped everything off with this blush from Kaja. And I felt like this blush tied in really well with the eyeshadow, which was one of the reasons I had chosen this eyeshadow scheme, I guess, out of the palette to begin with, because I felt like it went well with this blush. And I'm just going to kind of, again, diffuse the edges. But yeah, there you have it. I promise this was a random face of makeup and I didn't just choose everything myself. But I really hope you enjoyed this, even though it was not the traditional makeup roulette video. This is, I promise, what it looked like. I actually posted a vlog and had footage from right after I filmed and it will look like this. The eyeliner looks a little better in that video to be completely honest. But yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments about this look and the products mixed together. I definitely would have never paired all of this thing, all of these products together. Like I said, I've never even reached into this eyeshadow palette because I've been so intimidated by it being 42 shades. So yeah, and yeah. That is it for this video. As usual, thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I have my Twitter and my Instagram down below. Give them a follow and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.